1931. The year I hung up the old newspaper bag to get swept into another profession. <laughs> entrepreneur, <laughs> apprentice to the one and only Harold Burnett Ricks. An entrepreneur, a thinker, and well, more often than not, a failure. <laughs> he was a man who had changed my young life. He had told me to come to him with any business idea, see? And did I have an opportunity to tell him about today? Did I ever? Hey, Mr. Reese! Ah, uh, didn't I tell you to call me H.B.? Mr. Reese was my pop's name! Ah, uh, of course, anyhow. Mr. Reese! I have a business proposition for you. I saw in the newspaper that the candy factory down the street has an open conveyor belt, and they're having a competition to decide what to do with it. You can create a candy, and if your idea wins, you become a partner at the factory. It's going be a big shop! Say, that's not a bad idea. Now I just gotta think of a candy. Thanks, Apprentice! Yeah, of course! Whoa! <laughs> Why do you even carry around this open jar of peanut butter? We never see you eat it. You'll never spoon or a knife. Mostly just for aesthetic purposes. Uh, now I gotta wipe all this peanut butter off my chocolate bar. Say, that gives me an idea. Well, folks, I bet you can get what Mr. Reese's idea was. Mr. Reese's famous wiper chocolate bar. Designed to wipe peanut butter off of other things. <laughs> it was completely unsuccessful. Mr. Reese had to buy up thousands of wiper chocolate bars and keep them in his basement. But, eight years later, he accidentally ate one while it was covered in peanut butter and discovered the delicious combination of chocolate and peanut butter. Let's jump forward ten years to the year that nationwide production began of the Reese's Peanut Butter Cup. Can you believe it, Mr. Reese? It's the big day. We're going to be rich. Well, you're going to be rich. My position's still unpaid. <laughs> you know what, Jack? Didn't I tell you to call me HB? <laughs> anyway, Mr. Reese, I brought you a newspaper so we could check out the candy reviews to see what the critics are saying about the Reese's Peanut Butter Cup. Great candy reviews, my favorite section of the newspaper. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's see. Uh, good taste. I like having to peel off two layers of packaging. I knew they'd love that. <laughs> I love how easily it melts. I'm not sure how it's pronounced. Not sure how it's pronounced? What? It says here people are pronouncing it Reese's. <laughs> Reese's? That's wrong. I know it's wrong. Oh, what's a Reese's? They're Reese's peanut butter cups. There's no reason for anyone to say Reese's. <laughs> it's a possessive. They belong to Reese. They don't belong to Reese's. Mr. <laughs> Reese, I know. At least the critics like how easily they know. Uh, well, folks, at least they didn't go quite as we planned. But we kept up our work. Mr. Reese kept making delicious candy out of hope of success. And I kept on helping him, out of hope of one day becoming a paid employee. <laughs> Let's jump forward very far to the year 1982. Mr. Reese and I had gotten much older, but we would still de stay dedicated to our goal of making delicious candy and bringing it to the people. I finally got it, Jack! What is it, Mr. Reese? Hey, didn't I tell you to call me HB? Uh, <laughs> uh, to get people to stop saying Reese's, we'll make a new product. Pairing the word Reese's with a common rhyming word so people will know how to pronounce it. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Three weeks later, Reese's Pieces hit the shelves. <laughs> that day, our workshop got a visit. <clears throat> hey, Mr. Reese, I got an endorsement from this Spielberg guy. He wants to put Reese's Pieces in his new movie. They're going to be an alien's favorite candy in E.T. <laughs> you know, Jack, I always dreamt of making an alien's favorite candy, and now it's reality. <laughs> We're going to be rich. We finally hit the big time. Yeah. Hello. Are you Mr. Reese? That would be me. What can I do you for? Seems we got a bit of a business conflict. What's that? I'm a proprietor, see? I own two businesses. One sells personal computers and the other sells books identifying different species of animals. <laughs> I, uh, I don't see the problem. <laughs> Allow me to introduce myself. My name is Reese Donahue. My computer <laughs> business is called Reese's PCs. <laughs> <laughs> and my book business is called Reese's Species. <laughs> and they sound just like your new candy. Uh, no. No, they don't. Uh, you know why? Uh, because my new candy is called Reese's Pieces. <laughs> oh, really? That's not how I've heard people saying it. Everybody I know says Reese's Pieces. <laughs> is, that, is that really how they've been pronouncing it? <laughs> so you're telling me 
that instead of understanding that Reese's is a possessive, a name with an apostrophe S, yes, these people have kept that bastardized pronunciation and decided to change the already pre-established real word into some nonsense pronunciation of Hatchet? What the hell is wrong with these people? Why can't anyone do Reese's? How many times have I told you to call me H.B.? You're just as bad as the rest of the morons on this godforsaken rock spinning through space. Why can't anyone think about how to save things more than half a second? Why can't it? What? What? Uh, Greece. <laughs> Well, I'm uh, I'm sorry for your loss, and I'll see you in court next Tuesday. <laughs> well, that was the end of Harold Burnett Reese, a good man, a brilliant entrepreneur, and the maker of some darn good candy. Maybe you could tell this was a fictionalized account of the history of Reese's candy, but you know it's not fictional. Statistics show that one in every four people says the word Reese's for Reese's. 25% um, of people, look around you at the audience, one in every four people you see. So please, if you hear someone say one of these words incorrectly, let them know. Together we can make the world a sweeter place. Thank you.